Sleep disturbances, what we have to remember, are extremely multifactorial. We can't look at something like concussion and say, because of concussion, I can't sleep. Sleep disturbances can happen for a variety of reasons, uh, and they are, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, but pain, if you have pain and you have headaches, you will be unable to sleep just based on the fact that you have pain. Chronic stress. Now that chronic stress, particularly following injury, could be due to the injury itself. So something like a post-traumatic stress disorder, let's say you're involved in a very traumatic experience, motor vehicle accident, um, veterans returning from the battlefield, all of that stuff is going to affect your sleep based on the stress of the incident itself. But you can also have stress from things surrounding the injury itself. So for example, dealing with insurance companies, dealing with lawyers, you know, dealing with disability claims and dealing with pushy bosses that need to get you back in the office and you're worried about how you're going to make ends meet and you're not able to function and that's keeping you up at night. The problem is that becomes cyclical because you're up all night that makes you feel more anxious, that makes you feel more foggy, that creates a lot of the same symptoms as you would see in just typical concussion and it's just compounding in this kind of vicious cycle. Uh, psychiatric disorders, anxiety and depression can create sleep disruptions. Now when we spoke about insomnia we said that 50% of those with insomnia have trouble falling asleep and 50% of those report more frequent waking. Now some studies on this, some review studies that, that I pulled up on this were that people that had trouble falling asleep tended to be more associated with anxiety type symptoms. On the other end, people having difficulty staying asleep tended to be higher in terms of depression-like symptoms. So those two mental health conditions may be affecting your sleep in different ways. So mental health obviously plays a big role in sleep. Brain injury. Some studies have found that following brain injury, your production of melatonin actually reduces. Now, for those that don't know, melatonin is a hormone that is secreted by the pineal gland, uh, which is just back from the, from the thalamus uh, in the brain. And the, the, the purpose of melatonin is to regulate your sleep-wake cycle. So melatonin is secreted typically when there's absolute darkness to signify that it is now nighttime and time for sleep and is suppressed during daytime. Melatonin also serves to lower blood pressure and lower body temperature to get you ready for sleep. So there's other benefits of melatonin production. So having good quality sleep can help these things. There's also a theory that brain injury may affect your sleep architecture which your cycles of sleep. So you'll go through kind of these light phases of sleep and then you'll get into your deeper sleep or your REM cycle sleep. Following brain injury, we find that patients typically stay in the lighter cycles of sleep and have more difficulty getting into that deep restorative REM sleep. Um, so that could be a thing. Now this is purely theoretical. There hasn't really been a ton of evidence on this yet. Diet. Now I always relay a lot of things back to diet. Uh, indigestion, nighttime cravings and hunger. Um, this could be related to protein deficiencies in your diet. Also, there's a whole new area of study that's looking at how diet can affect your mental status and poor diet can affect anxiety and make you feel foggy and lethargic and all of these different things which can affect your sleep but also make you feel like no matter how much sleep you get, you're always fatigued, you're always dra drained and you just can't seem to get over it. This could be related to some of the foods you're eating, particularly if you're eating foods that are kind of high in that inflammatory um, type, type, you know, type, <laughs> type, type, um, but also with people with various food sensitivities. So for example, like sugars and things like that can make you feel very lethargic, right? After you have a big meal, you want to, you want to, you need to go have a nap or whatever, but you just feel kind of drained. And that could be one of the reasons. So the foods you're eating can in, in fact affect your mental health, but also, um, in turn affect your sleep. Now this creates a cloudy picture, right? Is it the chicken or the egg? Are you having trouble sleeping because you feel like crap? Or are you feeling like crap because you're having trouble sleeping? 
And this makes it very difficult to figure out the clinical picture when dealing with a patient, particularly when they're having sleep disruption. Um, so if you're stressed and your mind is active and you can't shut it off and your diet is terrible and you're worried about work and you had a traumatic experience and you know your disability claim has now been denied and all of these things, that's keeping you up at night, but then you can't function because you're so foggy and drained and confused and your eyes are weird and you feel just messed up because you're not sleeping. So now it affects your ability to work and get things done during the day. And so this is the cycle that people often get into and sometimes the best thing to do is just figure